Listening fill in the blanks. Let's start. Bidding costs do not compare, however, to the exorbitant bills that come with hosting the Olympic Games themselves. As is typical with large scale, one off projects, budgeting for the Olympics is a notoriously formidable task. Los Angelinos have only recently finished paying off their budget breaking 1984 Olympics, Montreal is still in debt for its 1976 Games. To add insult to injury, Canada is the only host country to have failed to win a single gold medal during its own Olympics. The tradition of runaway expenses has persisted in recent years. London Olympics managers have admitted that their 2012 costs may increase 10 times over their initial projections, leaving taxpayers £20 billion in the red. In any event, there can be no doubt that the era of the rock climber is a lone wolf or intrepid pioneer is over. Like many other forms of recreation, rock climbing has increasingly come under the fold of institutional efforts to curb dangerous behavior and properly manage our natural environments. This may have spoiled the magic, but it has also made the sport safer and more sustainable, and governing bodies would do well to consider heightening such efforts in the future. Researchers from the European Organization for Nuclear Research, CERN, in Geneva sent the neutrinos hurtling through an underground corridor toward their colleagues at the Oscillation Project with Emulsion Tracing Apparatus, OPERA, Team 730 kilometers away in Gran Sasso, Italy. The neutrinos arrived promptly so promptly, in fact, that they triggered what scientists are calling the unthinkable that everything they have learned, known or taught stemming from the last 100 years of the physics discipline may need to be reconsidered. Even more confounding than Manet's relaxed attention to detail, however, is the relationship in the painting between the activity in the mirrored reflection and that which we see in the unreflected foreground. In a similar vein to Diego Velasquez's much earlier work Las Meninas, Manet uses the mirror to toy with our ideas about which details are true to life and which are not. In the foreground, for example, the barmaid is positioned upright, her face betraying an expression of lonely detachment, yet in the mirrored reflection she appears to be leaning forward and to the side apparently engaging in conversation with her mustachioed customer. As a result of this, the customer's stance is also altered. In the mirror, he should be blocked from view as a result of where the barmaid is standing, yet Manet has repositioned him to the side. The overall impact on the viewer is one of a dreamlike disjuncture between reality and illusion. At the age of 13, Miles Davis was given his first trumpet. Lessons were arranged with a local trumpet player, and a musical odyssey began. These early lessons, paid for and supported by his father, had a profound effect on shaping Davis' signature sound. Whereas most trumpeters of the era favored the use of vibrato, a wobbly quiver, in pitch inflected in the instrument's tone, Davis was taught to play with a long, straight tone, a preference his instructor reportedly drilled into the young trumpeter with a rap on the knuckles every time Davis began using vibrato. This clear, distinctive style never left Davis. He continued playing with it for the rest of his career, once remarking, if I can't get that sound, I can't play anything. In the early days of mountaineering, questions of safety, standards of practice, and environmental impact were not widely considered. The sport gained traction following the successful 1786 ascent of Mont Blanc, the highest peak in Western Europe, by two French mountaineers, Jack Balmat and Michel Gabriel Packard. This event established the beginning of modern mountaineering, but the sole consideration over the next hundred years was the success or failure of climbers in reaching the summit and claiming the prestige of having made the first ascent. Animals with active electroreception possess bodily organs that generate special electric signals on cue. These can be used for mating signals in territorial displays as well as locating objects in the water. 
Active electroreceptors can differentiate between the various resistances that their electrical currents encounter. This can help them identify whether another creature is prey, predator or something that is best left alone. Active electroreception has a range of about one body length, usually just enough to give its host time to get out of the way or go in for the kill. Hosting the Olympics is often understood to be an excellent way to update a city's sporting infrastructure. The extensive demands of Olympic sports include aquatic complexes, equestrian circuits, shooting ranges, beach volleyball courts, and of course, an 80,000-seat athletic stadium. Yet these demands are typically only necessary to accommodate a brief influx of athletes from around the world. Despite the enthusiasm many populations initially have for the development of world-class sporting complexes in their hometowns, these complexes typically fall into disuse after the Olympic fervor has waned. Even Australia, home to one of the world's most sportive populations, has left its taxpayers footing a $32 million a year bill for the maintenance of vacant facilities. The issue at stake is a tiny segment of time, precisely 60 nanoseconds, which is 60 billionths of a second. This is how much faster than the speed of light the neutrinos manage to go in their underground travels, and at a consistent rate, 15,000 neutrinos were sent over three years. Even allowing for a margin of error of 10 billionths of a second, this stands as proof that it is possible to race against light and win. The duration of the experiment also accounted for and ruled out any possible lunar effects or tidal bulges in the Earth's crust. Not everyone was supportive of Davis's change of tune. Compared to the recordings of his early career, universally applauded as linchpins of the jazz oeuvre, trumpeter Winston Marsalis derided his fusion work as being not true jazz, and pianist Bill Evans denounced the corrupting influence of record companies, noting that rock and pop draw wider audiences. In the face of this criticism Davis remained defiant, commenting that his earlier recordings were part of a moment in time that he had no feel for any more. He firmly believed that remaining stylistically inert would have hampered his ability to develop new ways of producing music. From this perspective, Davis's continual revamping of genre was not merely a rebellion, but an evolution, a necessary path that allowed him to release his full musical potential. Like, share, subscribe the channel and press the bell icon for further updates.